Let's take a deep breath and breathe out. Doesn't it feel good? Now make a sound when you breathe out. Ah, wonderful. Again. Ah. And now make a sound. This is where you want to be, all right? Again. Uh... Beautiful. Music reminds us of the present moment. It reminds us of here and now. When we do music, we have to be here and now. And when we do music together, we are reminded of each other. And the more we are present, the more we can connect. When I was young, I was very much into science. I wanted to become a scientist, just like my father. But music showed me ways to connect and reach out and touch hearts. What I didn't know then was that I would be able to monitor hearts and their response to music. And I could heal myself by playing music. So I became a music professional. And it wasn't until 20 years later that I got the opportunity to combine science and music. I got a call from the University Hospital here in Gothenburg. Do you want to join a research team combining science and music and health? And the goal was to see, could we use music in stressful situations at the hospital before surgery? perhaps already in the ambulance? And could we use music after surgery to recover and to motivate to get back? And could this research team that I just had joined show with facts and figures that music could be an alternative to medical drugs, a sustainable alternative without the side effects? In order to show this, we had to do measurements. So we wired up people, we put headphones on, had them blindfolded, and turned the music on. Sometimes I would play live, watching closely the reactions in the heart, in the breathing, small moist changes on the skin, reflecting the emotional levels of the listeners. And I could adjust the music according to what I saw. So we learned a lot from these tests. We looked at how closely the heart rate follows the breathing. And we said, what happens in a choir? Because in a choir, the breathing goes together. Would that mean that the heart rates go together in the, of the heart of the choir singers? Hmm. We decided to find out. So we gathered a couple of singers and uh, had them sing and we uh, monitored their pulses to see where we write. Would their, would their heart rates go together in unison? And they did. We were right. We wrote a scientific paper about this. It was spread all over the world and it was covered in the big news medias like CNN, BBC, Times of India, all over the place. And at the same time, there were studies showing how choir singing can be a great therapy for people with diseases like Alzheimer, uh, dementia, Parkinson, COPD. So hopefully all these studies and research were encouraging people to get together and sing and dance and connect. But in a way, this is old news. Very old news. As long as we know, people have gathered to sing. In the caves, in churches, singing hymns as well as mantras and prayers. And I doubt that these monks could foresee that someone in the future would uh, measure the hearts and see how they were synchronizing, unless they were having a what-if event. But they sang anyway 
because they could feel the connection. They could connect on so many levels. And I think that this synchronization tells us something about how we connect emotionally. It was interesting to see that this effect was most strong when you sing slow songs with long phrases. I think today we, have tend, we tend to forget how to slow down and take a deep breath. Maybe we should consider starting the day with singing a slow song to get in tune with each other, just like we did in school when I was a kid. Now, the heart is the center of, of our being. It's, it's the heart. It sends signals to our brain, to our digestion, to our emotions, and how we connect to each other. When we sing slow songs or breathe slowly, actually the heart is brought to a smooth rhythm, a variation, which is actually a health sign in that moment. And there are studies showing that if you practice slow breathing with music for a while, you can reduce hypertension and other stress symptoms. So based on this research, I have composed special music that guides your breathing to a pace that controls the heart to get into this soft sound wave. And um, we are researching this right now at the hospital, but also at a car factory here in town. Because if this works in a stressful situation at the hospital, we thought it could work in a stressful situation at work. And everyday life can be just as stressful as any work, as you know. So we're making this available for anyone. So I want to try this a little bit with you and make music. And how often do we get ourselves time to just breathe? Now I will give you a chance to just breathe slowly for a while and reflect. And, and I will have the chance to practice on having pauses. So just follow the instructions. We to breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Out. You can close your eyes if you want. feel good? Yeah. Now, our connections are vital. They are vital to our health. And, you know, there are a lot of songs about broken hearts. Maybe those are true. Actually, there is a new diagnosis called broken heart syndrome. And just as you may think, this is caused by emotional trauma or stress. It could be your loved one's leaving you or suddenly dies in front of you. Our vital connections break. And it's close to a heart attack, but it's different, and it's most common among women. 
And it can be fatal, but it can also be healed. There's no remedy right now. But I've been asked to do special music, to see if this music can help in the self-healing process of these patients and their hearts. So, what if music can heal broken hearts? Thank you.